Now, now, I know what you're thinking, and it's not complete clickbait. But look, here it is. Da, 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 da. This is 100% 3D printed. Uh, this is a uh, Game Boy Micro frame. So, for context, for those that don't know what they what this is, the Game Boy Micro is a somewhat unpopular Game Boy model uh, released very late in the life cycle of the Game Boy. It was very unpopular due to the fact that it literally came out after the DS and for only slightly less money. So, you know, why, why wouldn't you just buy the DS? That was the better console. It had all the same functionality and then some. Uh, but anyway, the Game Boy Micro is constructed a little bit different than most Game Boys in that it uses this plastic frame to hold everything together, and then there's this aluminum enclosure over it. Uh, it is very solid. I am I, I personally really like how it feels. I'm very happy with mine. But one of the problems is the silver colors in particular were made with a plastic that over the years has not aged quite gracefully and tends to get very brittle, resulting in broken faceplate clips. Uh, so a lot of people will seek out replacement frames only to find out that there literally are no options for replacement frames. If you want a replacement frame, you have to pull it out of another perfectly working Game Boy Micro, which at that point, you know, just use that micro. But anyway, um, I haven't done too much investigation into the fact, but um, most of the evidence that I have seen has been silver Game Boy Micros that have cracked, not like black or green or the blue ones, but, but silver especially. Uh, so if yours is a silver one and it does have broken faceplate clips, just probably don't take it apart, just play it safe until we have full replacements. But as you can see, mine seems to have printed pretty nicely. So let's talk about what this is before we get into um, the rest of the video here. This is this was created by a user on Thingiverse who goes by Heth87. I'll go ahead and throw a link down in the description there. And what they did was they took their intact Game Boy Micro frame and they just did a 3D scan of it. Uh, now they did a scan at mm, 40 microns, which is actually pretty nice um it's pretty high resolution but unfortunately it doesn't it, it doesn't capture all the details like you know in the in the fine areas um it just it just ends up being filled in so what i did was i took that scan that he created and i made it into something that is printable uh, i didn't do a whole lot of work but uh, you know, a lot of the things I did do was I made the screw holes so they're actually screw holes. I made the clips actually clips. Um, and now that I'm looking at this, I see a few more areas that I should have cleaned up, but I just quite frankly missed while I was working on it. Uh, like I should have added more reliefs next to the screw post so that the membranes will fit in properly. So unfortunately, this isn't quite there, but I'm going to do some more tweaking and then I'll post the model. But before, before we get that far, let's see how it works as is. So instead of taking apart one of my um, Game Boy Micros in my collection, I'm just going to use this Tupperware container full of what is allegedly a working Game Boy Micro. And as you can see right on top here, this is, this is the part that is being replicated here. And it is, it, it's basically one to one. Um, aside from being a different color, but that's just related to the 3D print. Uh, also, for context, I did not print this. I don't have a printer capable of printing something this complex. Uh, this was ordered through Shapeways. I had them print it. It was not cheap, but I had to try it out. I can't just, I can't just make something and release the model, you know? It's, that's not how that works. I gotta test it out. Alright, let me get these buttons here and then we will try this out. Alright, so yeah, here's here's the shell of the micro. Um, hopefully Hef 
can scan the other part of the frame too. Uh, this part isn't usually broken, usually in my experience, but it is made of the same plastic and it will be just as fragile. So hopefully he can get this part scanned in too so that we can get a whole frame because even though they kind of suck, these shells are available on the aftermarket. Uh, this is, of course, an OEM micro. But anyway, let's let's put it together. Let's let's try it out, shall we? I had all these screws nice and organized, and then, well, I had them all nice and organized inside the battery cover, and then I accidentally dropped something on the battery cover, and they just went everywhere. So that ended that. But. I'm pretty sure I remember how to put this together, so. It's so far, so good. Let's see if I can speed run assembling a Game Boy Micro out of memory. Yeah, see, the uh, membrane doesn't quite fit. I think it'll be fine uh, once screwed together. But I will work on improving that before I upload the model. I don't know that I'll have the ability or time to really test it, but... I think that's basically it. Am I forgetting something? Oh, I see that membrane has come out. Yeah, this still needs a lot of work. That's a shame. I mean, still definitely a good option, though. Oh, this goes first. And this goes over that. And I mean, if nothing else, it is clipping together. Are, is that correct? Oops, that's the power switch, not the volume rocker. Yeah, this isn't quite the smoothest experience. I think I can make it work, though. I think there should be three screws. So frame. Okay. Of course, I'm ruining this poor micro. 
Ooh, that did not go in smoothly. I don't think this goes next, but we're gonna send it anyway and see what happens. One thing I can improve is opening up these screw holes just a little bit more. That can always be part of the post processing, you know, just drill these holes out with a drill bit, whatever size you need. Uh, ooh, that is not very pretty. Uh, but we're getting there. Those don't quite line up properly. <laughs> it's all right though. Uh, I got the reassembly order incorrect. There's supposed to be there's a screw missing somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where. I want to say down in this corner though. Try pulling this out. Yep. Right here. That's the wrong button, that's why that doesn't fit. Whoopsie doodle. Ugh.
We're getting there. We're getting there. screws into the aluminum frame so it shouldn't be any more difficult to assemble. Same with the remainder of these screws here. go I think we're good let me go ahead and find oh yeah you can see all the swerf coming out of the screw holes because I didn't make them big enough let me clean that up before I finish this a battery and I'm fairly certain I have one right here brand new I've always hated these recessed connectors Lined up. And of course, the screen's covered in fingerprints because, of course, it is. I'm not going to bother cleaning it because this thing's just coming apart after the video, anyhow. But, grab. I have no audio, which the, the speaker might have shifted at some point. I'm not even getting the click, click, click. Oof, and the start and select are basically stuck down.
Oh, select works if I press really hard. I got nothing out of start, but everything else is fine. So yeah, no select, no start, and uh, no speaker, but that's about it. I mean, it does work. It's really tight going together because some of those membranes don't quite line up the way they should. Um, in my case, it's obviously kind of foolish to keep using this, so I'm going to be swapping this back in. Um, I'll do it off camera. I'm not going to artificially extend this video any further, but I mean, it does work. If your faceplate is broken, this is absolutely an option as soon as I get it a little bit more refined. And, you know, the best part is, is it doesn't, like, you don't have to go out of your way to get it printed in some fancy color because you literally don't see that bit of the frame once you've got it reassembled. All the plastic bits that you do see are of the back part, which hopefully yours isn't broken, but if it is, you can't get one printed anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, at least not yet. You can, if you look carefully, only because it's a different, uh, different color, you can sort of see it in the shoulder button area where my shell isn't perfectly laying flat, but I mean, it does work. The power switch is a little bit more uh, stiff, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just not used to it. But yeah, I think once I get start and select working, this thing will be pretty much good to go. I just gotta figure out why those aren't quite working. I think it might be because that board isn't seated properly, but I'm not 100% sure. But either, either way, there you go. That is, as far as I can tell, the first 3D printed Game Boy Micro ever. Well, I don't know. Um, I could be wrong, but as far as I know it is, and if there are others, they haven't been very well published. Um, Word on the street is that there is someone making Game Boy Micro frames with plastic injection molding uh, on Taobao. I don't know the details. I know they're not done yet as of today, August 16th. Um, I also don't know the pricing. Um, let, me, let me actually look up how much this was. Right, so it's pretty hard to beat. I ordered this frame through Shapeways. I had it printed. I used the gray PA-12 uh, with glass fiber reinforcement. Uh, so it is a nylon printed frame. I don't, I don't have a printer that can print that sort of thing. And even if I did, you know, my my printer's garbage. It can barely print. Anyway. Um, that ran me $11.66 for the print itself, uh, and then I ended up paying, I don't know how much shipping was, but it was anywhere from like 5 to 15 bucks. So let's call it 25 bucks to get you a new frame. That's not terrible if you have a micro that's broken. Uh, if you're ordering through Shapeways, I honestly recommend just like bulk ordering things. You know, you can get a few things at the same time save a little bit of money if if there's other stuff you actually genuinely want printed uh like hmm, i don't know sp hinge removal tools uh but either way 12 bucks just for the print itself before shipping that is that is a very hard to beat price uh of course as is as of right this very moment it is not currently usable but it's Eh, about 80% of the way there. I'm going to make some revisions. I'm going to upload the file. Uh, by the time I get this video published, I will have the new file uploaded, but I probably won't have it tested. So, um, you know, you use your own judgment on that. Uh, if you want to wait for me to test it, I will be ordering another one. I'll probably make another video or Instagram post or something. I don't know. But either way, I'm super excited about this. This is really cool. Um, we we haven't had this sort of stuff, and this this 
stupid frame is just so absurdly complicated to model up in any CAD application and just beyond modeling it, you know, you got to print it. There's not a single flat surface on this Jesus thing. You can see this front curves, the back, you know, it's got all these protrusions. It's, there's no good way to print this. You have to like lay it down flat on the bed like this and then print up like that. And then you've got a whole bunch of supports for all this big open area. It's just, it's not, it's not good. And even then, nice and flimsy like even if you do get it printed you know uh. anyway it's enough rambling um yeah i'll do some more work on this i'll get it uploaded there'll be links in the description uh otherwise i hope you have a fantastic day thank you for watching